All right, now I'm gonna to try to do like five things at once. I'm gonna go from balancing equations and, and building equations from word problems to then stoichiometry and then to standard temperature and pressure. So if all you need is standard temperature and pressure and you don't wanna click the link, it's right there. And we also have periodic table there. We have this here. So ammonia reacts with oxygen gas to form nitric acid and water. Let's try to form our chemical equation. So we have to label first, what are our reactants and what are our products? So basically whatever comes before to form is going to be reactants and whatever comes afterwards is going to be, um, is going to be products. So ammonia is NH3. I don't have that memorized. I have the notes next to me that say that ammonia is NH3 plus, and I'm going to leave a gap here so I can put numbers in later, but not right now, oxygen gas O2 to form, we use an arrow, nitric acid, NO, and water, H2O. Okay, again, I didn't memorize that nitric acid was NO. So, oh, it's actually not nitric acid, it's nitric oxide. Let's not make that mistake. Oh, yeah, that's fine already. So, ammonia reacts with oxygen gas to form nitric oxide and water. This is called our skeleton equation, or skeletal equation, because it doesn't involve amounts, it just involves what materials and what's reacting and what is being produced. Now we need to balance this equation. Now balancing can be extremely laborious and painful. This one is extremely laborious and painful so that you can see how it's done on an intense scale so that you can then apply everything to a lesser scale. Just know that if we had something instead that was like this, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this one first. So that way you can see how it works. Hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to form water. I'm actually gonna separate this a little bit so I can do other stuff. If you hear a squeaky toy in the background, that's my mom playing with my dog. So hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to form this here. So first let's, let's see things that might be equal. It's entirely a seesaw. So we need things on this side to equal things on this side, things on this side to equal things on this side, on all aspects. If there is a single imbalance, we have an issue. Now, our first step is to start with individual atoms, luckily, and we only go to the reactant side for it first. Um, actually, we can go to the products if there's only individual atoms on the product side as well, but we don't tend to. So we have H2 and O2. Let's start with H2. H2 here. H2 here, balanced. O2 here, O1 here. So that means to get this to balance with that, we need to have two waters. So now our oxygens are balanced, but now our hydrogens are imbalanced because we just changed the amount. So we went from two to two, so that's four hydrogens on this side. So we can go four hydrogens on this side. Now we only have two here, so we gotta multiply this one by two, and then now we have four hydrogens, and now everything is equal. So this would be the equation for hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to form water this would be the chemical equation because now we've included the numbers. Now a full chemical equation would also include the state of matter, like gas, gas, liquid, or I don't even know if in this case, um, these two can only react in temperatures either high or low enough that would only form ice or uh, water vapor, in which case this would actually change to solid or gas but I believe it is liquid for this equation. Now, there's also one more state of matter. It's called aqueous, with the abbreviation, or abbreviation that. Aqueous is basically when something is dissolved in water. So something that is not water dissolved in water. Okay, now let's go to the extremely long and laborious one. NH3 plus O2 is equal to NO plus H2O. First, let's start with our individual. We have an O2 and then we have two O's over here. Perfect, O's are already checked out, so we don't need to change any of the O's. Now we need to go to this one. Oh God, so N's are balanced, perfect. So now let's just look at hydrogens. We go from three hydrogens to two hydrogens, which means we need to multiply this side by two, this side by three, to get greatest common, um, or to get the least common multiple of those two. So now hydrogens are balanced, but now nitrogens are imbalanced. Because there's only two nitrogens in each of these, whereas oxygen appears three times, we're going to focus on our nitrogens first. Now, nitrogen goes from two and then now one, so this needs to be a two. 
So now this one goes here. So we have three ones. So that's three on this side. So I'm going to go three, oh, oh, that's not probably what I want to do. We'll go three because now we're just keeping track of oxygen. Now it's very nice if you take small notes with this, it'll make it way easier for you. Two, and then we have only two over here. We need it to get equal five. Oh my gosh, that's painful. So if we need it to get it to equal five on this side, because we have a total here of five. So the only way we can get that to happen is by multiplying everything over here by two, everything over here by five. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this to be five because five times two is 10. This here, to everything to be multiplied then by two. Now just know we multiplied those two by two, which means this one also has to be multiplied by two because that's how keeping a balancing act with a normal mathematical equation works. And now that we have everything balanced out, let's see how this works. And notice that it is very mathematical. It's just trying to keep balance. So we have 4n, 4n, perfect. We have 4, 3, 12 hydrogen plus 6, 2, 12 hydrogen. Now let's check oxygen, 10. And then 4 plus 6 is also 10. This here is our final, our final chemical equation. And luckily, we don't need to know what the uh, states of matter are. Although this one would be liquid, probably. This one would be gas, probably, because oxides tend to be gases. This one is a gas, for sure, because it's oxygen gas. And then ammonia, liquid or solid, or no, because there's no water, so it's not aqueous, unless you count this water. But you see how you just kind of have to know. So now this is our final equation. So now what we're going to do is go into stoichiometry, which is basically just changing the amount or using an equation like this to calculate exactly how much products would be created with a certain amount of reactant except instead of it being in grams or except instead of it being in numbers like this, it would be in grams or moles. Now, what is a, what is a gram? It's just a unit of measurement used to describe how much there are. What is a mole? Mole, a mole or abbreviated mole, which I'm going to only abbreviate it with this mole because this abbreviation mole actually, or mole as in this mole, this mole here is an abbreviation for molecules, which is a completely different unit of measurement describing literally how many molecules are in any given amount of something, which is something really stupid. I think it's like 10 to the 24th power or like some insane amount. So now, now what we need to know for how moles work is this, is this nonsense here. So at the very bottom, we have the atomic mass. That is basically how much grams or kilograms, I think it's grams though, I'm pretty sure, no, it is grams, 100% grams, uh, how many grams of a substance you need to get one mole of the substance. These numbers here stand for the amount of moles needed to properly react. So that means if we have four moles of this and five moles of that, we'll get four moles of this and six moles of that. Now, let's say we have our problem here, which this one is literally from the notes in honors chemistry. So 203.0 grams water were produced. How many grams of oxygen we needed? How many? Oh my gosh, I just threw that cap so far. No! So how many grams of oxygen would we need? So we would have to go ahead and do some conversions. So we can only work in moles because our conversion is in moles. So we have to convert our grams to moles, and then we have to convert our moles back to grams once we get the amount of oxygen. So we can go any direction. We can go from products to reactants or reactants to products as long as we go through moles first. So 203.0 grams of water produced. So we have 203.0 grams H2O. Now, 
your teacher may mark you off if you don't specify every single every single letter, every single word in each of these things. Now, this is dimensional analysis now. So your teacher will mark you off if they ask for your full work and you don't show every single thing, including grams and H2O, because it's actually better to keep track of what you're doing if you label everything, because then you know what you're dealing with. So now with dimensional analysis, know that we have to have the units on the top and bottom be the same if we want to cancel out that unit and if we want to properly convert that unit. So first of all, we want to convert this into moles now because we want our water to be able to transfer into our oxygen. So we need our moles to talk about that. So we need to know how many grams are in one mole of H2O. So one mole of H2O is just the addition of all of these molecules here and just know that you cannot round these things. In honors chem, you might, but in AP chem, you cannot. Cool, just through my calculator. So H2O is one molecule or one molecule of oxygen plus two molecules of hydrogen. So 16 is oxygen plus two times 1. Point, no, not 10. 1.008. Yes, that's what it is there. So that is equal to 18.016. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it rounding because I have the answers here in rounding, but just know that you don't round. You typically do not round. So one mole H2O, so we'll have 18 grams of H2O. Notice how grams are on the top here and on the bottom here because we're trying to convert to moles. So now what we'll do is we don't need to calculate this yet because we wanna keep going until we reach grams of oxygen on the top. So now we have moles of H2O, so let's convert moles of H2O to moles of oxygen because that would be our next step. So we'll go how many moles of water for how many moles of oxygen? Six moles of water, six mole H2O for five moles of oxygen. Okay, now we'll figure out how many moles and then how many grams. So we want to know how many grams of oxygen. So we want to know how many moles are in a gram or how many grams are in a mole. That would probably be better. So we'll go one mole of O2 is equal to how many grams of oxygen. And keep in mind it's O2. So that's 16 there. So that'll be 32 grams. 32 grams of O2. And then literally, if you don't realize this already, dimensional analysis is just a series of fractions that you multiply together, where this is a fraction all over one times this fraction, one over 18 times this fraction, five over six times this fraction, 32. So we'll go 203.0 divided by 18 times five divided by six times 32. And that gives us 300.74. So we'll check sig figs to see how much we need. Now, our problem only specifies this many sig figs, so we are going to deal with four sig figs. Just know that if we have to pull numbers from somewhere that isn't the actual explicit problem, then those don't count as numbers for sig figs. So now we have to go like this and say that we have four sig figs here because we start from the left because there's one present. Um, so one, two, three, four, we have four sig figs, so we'll round this off to four sig figs. So one, two, three, four would give us two, seven. The four behind the seven rounds down. So we will have 300.7 grams of oxygen. And that there is how you do stoic. So that there is how you do stoic. Just know that if you get asked how many moles and then how many moles, you can just go from here to here. If you get asked grams to moles, you'll go from here to here. If you get asked moles to grams, you'll go from here to here. And then if you get asked grams to grams, you'll do the whole nine yards. So that is how stoic works. Now let's talk about STP. So standard temperature and pressure. So I'm going to keep this here because I believe this involves the same exact equation. Um, no, it doesn't. We have to make our new. We have to make a new equation, which will give us more practice for, um, for making equations. This one asks. Um, 
volume of oxygen, mind you, oxygen gas, needed to react with solid sulfur to form 3.5 liters of sulfur dioxide. So now we have to create our equation. So first of all, to form, so that's our split. So everything before it is reactants and everything afterwards is products. We're talking about oxygen and solid sulfur. So oxygen is O2, solid sulfur is S2 because those are diatomics, which means that they bind with themselves to form stable molecules. Actually, no, I lied. It's not diatomic. Um, is equal to, sulfur is not diatomic. Is sulfur diatomic? Let's see. Um, it is diatomic. I knew it. I knew it was. Okay. Is equal to SO2. So we need to do our balancing act here. Oxygens are fine. Sulfurs are not. We need two of these, which means we need two of these. There we go. Gosh, my dog is barking. I don't know if you can hear her, but she is. So that there is our chemical equation balanced. So now we need to form 3.5 liters of SO2. So just know that at standard temperature and pressure, STP for short, which is 273 degrees Kelvin, please know the difference between Kelvin and Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, although oftentimes you will only see Celsius and Kelvin, you will not really see Fahrenheit because in the United States we're weird. And you'll see one atmospheric pressure. Now they may give you other, other forms for what pressure is. And just know that it could be anything like, I, I don't even remember what the other kinds are, but typically you get given stuff in, typically you get given stuff in atmospheric, atmospheric pressures. And just know atmospheric pressure comes from the amount of pressure at sea level on Earth. Um, those other kinds as well. But they all have conversion rates for atmospheres, which typically they will give you those conversion rates, although I could be wrong. I would say ask your teacher about that if they'd be willing to give you conversion rates. Um, and at this temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas, literally any gas, is 22.4 liters. Wow, that's convenient. So we have a universal conversion measure for all gases. Note, we only have one gas here. Um, and I'm pointing at the sulfur for that because it's not the gas. Let's specify that it's not the gas. So we have plus S2 solid is equal to sulfur dioxide, which I believe is a gas. Uh, yeah, well, it, it would be if they're specifying it's that many liters. Uh, either that or it would be a liquid, but typically it's not liquid when they're trying to ask you a question about standard temperature and pressure. So now we have two oxygen plus sulfur is equal to that many sulfur dioxide. So now let's get into standard temperature and pressure and actually convert the stuff. Remember, we can move any direction because that's how stoic works. So we'll go 3.5 liters of SO2 and then convert this to moles. So we'll go, we'll go 22.4 liters SO2 is equal to one mole SO2. And then now because we're in moles, we can use this as our guideline. We want to find the volume of oxygen. Not keep in mind volume is talking about liters. So we're going to convert back to liters sometime. So we go from two to two. So two moles to two moles. This would be SO2 down here. This would be O2 up here because that's how cancellations work. Then we would go two, 2.4 liters of O2 to one mole. O2, that would cancel out the moles of O2 and give us just liters. And then we can calculate our answer from there because that's just basic dimensional analysis. We go 3.5, notice the two 22.4s will cancel out. And then these two ones will cancel out. So we're literally just 3.5. I don't need a calculator for that. 3.5 liters of O2 is how much we'd be left with. Now, note, 
note how we went from volume to volume and then our, our thing here canceled out. So we didn't need to use this. If we go from, so now you know, if we go from volume to volume, you don't have to go and do your one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters conversion. You can just go straight to your balanced, um, your balanced chemical equation. So that means that you can just instantly do it. So you can skip over this step. Uh, but of course, if you're going from volumes to moles or volume to grams or or any sort of vice versa where it's not going from volume to volume, then you need everything written out in excruciating detail. All right, there we go. That is the, whew, that is stoic. So now let's see if we can get one more thing done. I believe it's in this packet. Oh, first of all, let's, let's label what all of the different conversion rates are. So we go, one atmosphere is equal to is equal to 101.325 kilopascals which is equal to I'm just going to go like this and you'll know that that means equal to because these are all equal to one another 14.7 pounds per square inch psi Mythbusters is what I always think of whenever I hear that. Um, you'll also get 760 millimeters of mercury because back in the old days, they used to use mercury gauges to measure um, pressures because mercury is a liquid. So basically what they would do is they would get a container, hook it up right here uh, at the top, and then have a gauge right here with a certain amount of mercury in it. And basically what would happen, why do I, why is there a hair here? It's, there's no hair no longer. Basically what happened is as the pressure increases, the mercury would rise inside of our gauge and then give us a higher pressure. So millimeters of mercury as in that's how many millimeters the mercury rot, uh, rose. Um, and then after that we have um, 760 tor. Um, I don't even know what TOR stands for, but I I very rarely see it. It's almost completely not used anymore. Um, but just know it's the same as millimeters of mercury uh, in number. So that there's our conversion rates for that. Now let us let us see if we can find that last problem that I wanted to demonstrate. Ah, here we go. So. Now the final one is percentages and molecular formulas of percentages. Um, so basically, we're trying to figure out a substance at this point. So molecular formula of a substance containing 58.91 sodium and 41.09, oh, this is a percentage, percent sulfur, sulfur with a molecular mass of 78. 0.05 grams per mole. Okay, well that seems like a lot. That seems like a butt ton. But we're going to get this really simple so that we can do this really simply. So we know that all of this has to equal 100%, which means we can model everything here as if it were based on 100 grams, which means that the amount of percentage here is how many grams we're dealing with. So we can say that there are 58 0.91 grams of sodium in this substance. And then we'll start a dimensional analysis because we need to convert things to moles in order to know what we're doing. So we also have a 41.09 grams of sulfur because again, we're pretending because this percentage means that it can literally be any amount of anything. So let's just make it a really easy number. 
100 grams um grams of sulfur and then this would be a sulfur two i believe oh no no it wouldn't because now it's in a compound it's not alone so it's no longer diatomic uh with a molecular mass of 78.5 grams per mole the molecular mass will come in later so now we need to find out how many moles are there so we're going to do this we are going to do one mole of sodium over 23 grams of sodium to try to cancel out the grams and moles. Then we're going to go one mole of sulfur is equal to 32 grams of sulfur. And just know that I got these two numbers uh, rounded, mind you. Now we're not rounding things, but for the sake of an easy video, I'm going to round them from our periodic table, the number at the bottom of the box for each element. Um, which is its atomic weight. Um, and now these are going to give us some numbers. So we are going to get this many moles of a certain substance. So what this one is equal to is two point, and then I'm not going to round this very easily. Uh, and mind you, I'm kind of using a sheet to copy from, so that way we can do things easily. So 2.56 one three zero oh, four is what this equals. Oh, I don't, I don't need to put that there. Oops, uh, it's not a fraction yet. Um, two point five six one three zero oh, four uh, moles of sodium, and then we'll have one point two eight four zero oh, six moles of sulfur. Now, why the heck did I go this far? Because we're going to talk about how something will work. Um, now I'm going to raise this standard temperature and pressure thing. I think it's the, I think it's been there long enough. So, because I need more space. So now this many moles moles can help us also figure out the amount of atoms in a substance. So that means that if we divide by the by the smallest number of moles in any given substance, so four o six moles. Of sodium, we can get how many atoms there are in that. So this the same thing divided by itself would be one. So we would have one sodium atom divided by one point and minus. And this is not going to be divided by the same thing. It's going to be divided by the lowest amount in any substance. So that means if we're dealing with a substance that has three things, it's all three are going to be divided by whichever one's lowest. Two eight four zero oh, six. Um, and we're just going to divide divide by this number, not necessarily moles of sodium or moles of sodium. It's just going to be by this number. Um, is equal to is equal to just about two. So we're going to have two and a atoms. Now we're not done yet. You'd think we're done by just saying Na2S. We're not done because we don't know that that's the answer yet. Because if this here does not equal 78.05 grams per mole, because that's the molecular mass of whatever substance we're dealing with, then this is not the answer. And we need to multiply it by a whole number to get that answer. Now, we have here Na2, which is 23 times 23, or 23 plus 23, so that would be 46, plus sodium, which is 32, so that would be um, 36 plus... Uh, 36 plus 32, or no, 46 plus 32, because it's not 36, it's 46, is 78. So yes, it is indeed Na2S. Um, and that is how you do that there. And that's how you figure out with the percentages. Okay, please don't tell me this video is so long that it won't upload. I hope it does. But there we go. That's literally all of the review stuff, or most of it. We'll see.